Okay, today we're going to talk about Route 66, the whole map. We're going to talk about some things that I recommend doing and some things that I recommend watching out for, focusing largely on the defender's perspective because they are typically the side trying to do something more specific. The attackers typically have more freedom in what they're trying to do, and it's more about knowing your options. So, let's start with the first checkpoint. So, Route 66, with the exception of the second checkpoint, is a good map to play a bunker comp on because, well, you've got this nice little high ground spot to sit on that the attacking team doesn't have very many ways to get to you from because as long as you're watching over there, you're pretty much set because you can't see somebody come through the other side of this from up here, so you've got to watch the doorway. But it's difficult to get up here. The attacking team, they have to turn this blind corner and if you're just sat up here with your bunker, they're like, Oh, Jesus Christ, here we go again. And then they have to push through this whole section in front of you. Fun fact, you can also contest the payload from up here on the high ground without having to drop down. So that's always nice to do. They have to actually then try and get you off of the high ground before they can actually start moving the payload again. Fair warning, also though, they can jump off of the payload onto the high ground once it gets close enough as well. So that can also be scary. But, so it's a good bunker map, it doesn't really matter what particular version of it you decide to go with. The Torbjorn, the Bastion, the Soldier Hanzo, if we're feeling particularly vanilla, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's all kind of fine. Um, tank and uh, support-wise, Anna Batista end up being pretty much the best ones to run on the map. Shockingly enough, the two best supports to run end up being the best supports to run. I know. I know. So, the sitting on the gas station is what we're trying to mostly do on this checkpoint, because then the attacking team have to funnel through this channel in front of you, for the most part, to push the payload. Don't come fight over here, as tempting as it might be. It's not that bad if you want to, like, come around this corner and, like, try and throw some poke at them as they're coming up this way. But we've got no interest in fighting before they turn this corner over here, this being basically the choke point we're trying to work with right here. It's not really much of a choke point, but it's pretty much what we're going with. But it's just difficult to get up here, so as long as you can control the high ground, it tends to be easy to control the attacking team at the same time, and you've only really got to watch out for that over there. Uh, this is a very common map to see uh, far on, because there's a lot of geometry for her to use, and a lot of, um, open space to punish people for just kind of walking out in. And, you know, big old cliff right there, she can... If far manages to get through there, unnoticed, she's gonna come up behind you and barrage you from behind, and that's always a very reliable way to get rid of a bunker. And the second checkpoint is particularly prone to seeing far on it, but we'll get to that bit later. So this is one of those maps where it's um, worth considering if you have anything that can kill a Farah, because there tends to be one. Um, not so, not as much as there used to be, far being less popular now than she used to be, but. I still see it pretty quick frequently on Route 66. So, but there isn't much to worry about outside of just this flanking route over here, and we're just trying to, like, keep them down there. Just try and, like, keep control of the high ground. Um, pretty common also to see, like, Widowmakers and Ashes go and stand on the opposing uh, high ground over there and shoot at you from over here. But as long as, like, you don't just go walking around in open space, as long as you stay with your tank, then it's not much of a big deal. Though it is also nice to have somebody that can, t can contest them as well, so another long-range DPS. Or, you know, if you've got a bunker, Roadhog can reach you over there, so, like, Roadhog can sort of do it as well. It's not like this is a particularly long sight line, but it's another type of hero that's commonly seen on this map. So, if we end up being unable to control the high ground, or we have to jump down to contest the payload, at that point, it's best to start defending from over here, because you can't really get surprised from over here. You've got a lot of cover to use as well, and there's a large health kit right here that you can use as well. So this corner ends up being good to defend from the low ground. Um, but the uh, ultimate goal is if we stop them, we're looking to get control of the high ground again. High ground being very overpowering, just as Obi -Wan Kenobi, Master Obi-Wan Kenobi taught us. So, but if we're defending on the high ground, this is, or the low ground rather, this is pretty much the best place to be. 
anywhere for like you can do it from over here as well like it's not that weird to see like reinhardt's jump down and start fighting over here as well uh just like holding the payload here um it's not that unusual to see orissa's do it as well but i'm less fond of defending over here as i am defending over here this just being like a slightly better position to defend more cover more resources good stuff and then you know you can always tuck your back to the wall if you have to absolutely have to but ideally we don't get to that point but it's not much to worry about on this first checkpoint it's fairly straightforward now the second checkpoint this is the checkpoint that's not so good to run a bunker on just because the attacking team has a lot more options available to them on this map on, the, on this checkpoint rather uh usually we'll end up defending like around here maybe a little bit further back if they start like if we start feeling like really pressured but we're mostly playing around like this corner it's not really feasible to defend any further up unless you get into some like really ridiculous situations i have seen it happen where like the attacking team pushes through this door the door closes behind them and then the attacking team loses momentum and the defending team team starts standing around here but this is like a scary place to be. There's not a lot of cover. You've got to go really far back to get to safety unless you're just going to try and like run through the bar, which is like fighting in the bar is scary. We don't want to fight in the bar if at all possible. So usually we'll sit more back here, backing up a little bit if we're feeling scared and mostly trying to like use this bridge area as the choke point for this checkpoint as it being pretty much the best thing on here we have and still try and defend high ground as much as we can. So the thing is that there's, the bunker isn't as good here because if we're defending like down here, which is what you're probably gonna be, the attacking team can go over there, they can come through the doorway over there, over there, and rush through there and then come at you from in the bar, and or they can go all the way around the back, they can go up, um, they can go up the staircase over here and then start trying to hit you from up here as well. The defense, the attacking team just has a lot more options here, so this is where I find it's better to run a dive comp type of arrangement instead, just because having more mobility and greater reaction speed to the things happening around you is beneficial for this checkpoint, because it's pretty common that you'll be like defending down here and there's a soldier up there, there's a widow up there, there's a far bouncing around, there's people coming this way, there's people coming around the backside. Being mobile and react and having heroes that can react to a bunch of different stuff happening at once is beneficial uh, Bunker comps tend to not really be um, Quickly maneuverable so they tend to not be able to respond to threats from multiple angles as well They pre much prefer when it's coming at them from one direction instead Or if it's coming at you from multiple directions It's only because there's like a cup like one or two things coming at you from a different direction this checkpoint can turn into a real clusterfuck very quickly so i find dive comps are better here so there's a lot to watch out for here this is the main scary thing because this is where most people are going to try and sneak through it's not exactly hard to keep track of that doorway uh because you can kind of see it from more or less anywhere not really from on the low ground but even if you're back here you start being able to see them as soon as they um get up onto the top of the gar garage so it's not exactly hard to keep track of for the most part. And if you're like a long range DPS, you're probably sitting like up here or over there. You can see it basically the whole time, but it's really common to see like a Hanzo, a soldier, a widow, basically anybody long range, try and like peek through that doorway just to try and pick somebody off because they're pretty safe doing that unless they get collapsed on. But just because of how far the doorway is from where people are usually standing, you tend to not be able to collapse on it too quickly. So it's pretty safe for them to just like poke around the corner, try and take a couple shots. And if anybody is like starts returning fire, they can duck back and regroup with their team. Easy peasy. So really common to see that from over there. Um, also, if you're standing over here which, you know, this is a little bit scary to stand over here, but sometimes is the case. You've got to be wary of long-range DPS poking at you through here as well. This is why standing far up here is pretty scary. You're also going to be really close to the attacking team below you, so I don't recommend doing that, but be wary of that as well. 
If you're back here, you've got to worry about them peeking through there at you as well. As over here, this is a pretty exposed place to stand. If you're a long range DPS, this is like the most safe place you can be, but it's not as aggressive as a line of sight as you'd get if you were stood like over here or over here. Um, this is pretty much the best place to be aggressively if you're a long range DPS, but be wary of like someone sneaking around you because you can't really see that doorway leading over there super easily. So if you like duck behind cover, someone can just like slip through there. Like you're just stuck in here to reload. They can slip through there while you're not looking. So even if you feel like you're checking that doorway pretty frequently, be aware that like they can slip by while you're distracted because it's not a great line of sight to it and sneak up behind you. So be aware of it all the same. But this is a more aggressive position, but pretty much the safest place you can be. Whereas back here is much safer, but a much less aggressive line of sight. Uh, can be scary to get dove up here because you pretty much have to jump down straight on top of the enemy team if they're pushing up towards you. So you've got to be pretty ready to like rotate around as soon as they start pushing up under you. But the further over this way you go, the less cover you have until you get here. And now it's just not a good line of sight anymore. Um, so this is awkward, but this is pretty much the best you get as a long-range DPS, unless you can manage to get up here, which not all DPS can obviously do. But bearing in mind, you are in the middle of an the island in the middle of nowhere, so if they've got anybody who can get up here, this is very scary. But if they've got, like, nobody or only, like, one person can get up here, really, to contest you, this is a pretty good place to be as well. You've got a nice line of sight straight down at them, but not many people can actually get up there to take advantage of that, unfortunately. But if you are, be aware that, like, you can be threatened from all locations, basically, if they can get up there. So be careful. Um, so that's pretty much the main thing to be aware of. And then... Uh, people flanking around the side of the bar or through the bar, and it's not exactly hard to do that even if they're not they don't have flanking teammates right because imagine we're like defending over here and they've got like a roadhog well the roadhog can just like come over here get a different angle on the shield try to hook you through the bar and then he's not really put in much risk of that similarly roadhog can like come around here try to hook you around this corner and like if we're defending like over here then him being all the way over here when he hooks somebody he can break line of sight really quickly and then start regrouping with his team as well. So like, even if they don't have flanking heroes, they were traditional flanking heroes, the architecture of the map makes it kind of easy for them to do it anyway. Even like a Hanzo or a McCree usually tries to come around here because same deal, if Hanzo comes around here, he's now looking behind your shield and if he like lunges back over here, he's broken line of sight really quickly and gotten away. Bearing in mind as well, if you're like defending up here, your supports and DPS are going to be standing more back here, right? So suddenly you can get seen from like a really wide angle and it's not hard for them to get back. So that's something to be aware of as well. Also, if you're up there, then they can peek around there and see you really easily as well and get back to their team if you start threatening them. So you've got to be wary of flanking on this route, which is why the bunker comps end up not being so good as well, I find. But... So there's a lot to keep track of on this map, uh, on this checkpoint, and things tend to start getting pretty chaotic pretty quickly. But pretty much, you can be threatened from a lot of different places, you've just got to sort of bear them all in mind. And having heroes, um, more mobile heroes is nice for this map, so you can respond to things quicker. And having hard crowd control is good as well, like your McCrees, your Bridgets, your Annas. Somebody that can um, try and fuck up the flankers when they go for it, you know, just by if like some Roadhog comes around behind you, Anna manages to trank him. Well, now we can get on him before he can retreat quickly, and suddenly it's a lot scarier for him. But you need to have the hard crowd control to make that happen. Uh, still have to be aware of uh, the long range DPS as well, especially if you start losing ground, because the further you get back here, the better this line of sight becomes for the attacking team. And you don't really get a lot of cover on this map as you start having to retreat, unfortunately. You sort of get hemmed in really quickly. So this, the further and further back you go, the better it becomes for the long-range DPS on the attacking team. Because suddenly the, gar the garage, the roof becomes a lot safer for them. And you can even like stand there and shoot from it and you're like, 
covered pretty well. Um, so as you get further and further back, you have to be aware of that. And then once you get back, like if you get pushed all the way back here, things are very dire for you at this point because now you can no longer even see where the team is going to flank from, right? Because suddenly the bar is blocking your line of sight to all the available flank routes. So suddenly you have to worry about people coming that way. You have to worry about long range DPS up on the high ground over there. You have to worry about them maybe going up there as well if they can get over the top. You've got to worry about people going through the bar to try and get you through this doorway. You've got to worry about people going through over there to try and get you over there as well. There's high ground over there that they might try and take advantage of as well, especially if you're like a little bit more over here. There's high ground over there that they can use as well to try and flank you. And again, it's easy to break line of sight and get away if they're attacking from over there. So there's a lot to keep in mind. And it's not, a, it's not impossible to defend this checkpoint, but... The attacking team has so many options available to them that it, and the defending team, they don't have great positions for this map, so it tends to be um, lost fairly quickly, unfortunately, as well. Also one of those maps that tends to snowball quite heavily, because this is like the best place to hold the um, attacking team, but... Suppose your team gets staggered for one reason or another, the attacking team might be able to just like push straight through here immediately and then they're like over here, which means you start defending over here. So it's one of those checkpoints that can get snowballed on you as well, just by virtue of only having like the one really solid defense position and then only like some pretty shitty ones from that point on. Even if you're like here, like the long range DPS can try and sneak you through this crack as well, which I've seen happen. It's, it's really scary. You can get threatened from a lot of spaces so you really don't want to get pushed back here so now third checkpoint third checkpoint extremely straightforward i'm i'm pretty sure this is the checkpoint i see captured the least in the entire game because it's really hard to push through this one so defending over on this corner right here is not particularly feasible people like to try and do this but it's not very easy to do slight adjustment start defending here instead if you want to defend like really far up because it's you don't have to you've got the attacking team they can't um they haven't got such good cover basically they have to actually like come around this corner or that corner over there to really see you you've got a lot of cover that you can use as well because you've got all these corners plus the um, shield you're going to have in the middle. And your long-range DPS can sit all the way back here. Extremely safe position, very hard to get to, large health kit to help them as well. But if you're defending up here, the attacking team is down there threatening you, which means your DPS have to stand, like, here if they're long-range, and this is nowhere near as good. Um, you can even get snuck up on over here because you can't see that doorway from over here. Unless they're going to stand up here, but that's not what the long-range DPS want to do. So don't defend from here, just defend from, like, here instead. And it's just better overall for the team. Your long-range DPS are may way happier about it. They've got to get real close to you to actually before they um, actually threaten you because they have to turn the corner first. It's better overall. And you can see the flank routes more easily because... Now that the attacking team are out here, they can now come through over this way to try and flank you. And if the, they like to come over here, and uh, if you're uh, over here, they can still come through these backsides and you, can't, you have to actually look back to see them. But you can see this route and you can see this route as well. Because if you're over here defending from this position, you can't really see that doorway. So, like, a Reaper or a May can slip through here, and then they're right on top of your team before you know what the fuck. That can't happen if you're over here. You've got to watch this door behind you, but it's not exactly hard. Look, you can see all the way through from back here, so as long as you peek in now and then, it's not a big deal. Whereas if you're over here, you've got extra things you need to worry about. It's not really a threat if you stood back here, so it limits their options, which is always good. You always want the attacking team to have less options available to them if possible. It's much easier to react to and counter things if the attacking team have only got one or two things they can take advantage of, right? Um, even if you're like up, if you're up here as well, then like same deal. Reaper and May can like come around here, and they're like pretty much on you already or immediately, right? So just defend back here. It's better. And it's, 
people like to be over here. It's not very good. Don't do that. And this checkpoint has the advantage of basically everything the entire way back is a good place to stand, pretty much. This part and this part gets scarier, but like, no matter how you shake it, this is basically just one long alleyway that the attacking team has to push through. Now, as you get pushed further and further back, the map opens up a little bit more for the attacking team, because if you're up here, as we've established, they've only really got a couple options available to them. But as you get pushed further and further back, they start getting a high ground they can take advantage of. Suddenly they can put, uh, take advantage of that as well. They can threaten you through here, because if you're like defending through here, someone like Roadhog can peek through, get a look on the shield, try and do that. The soft flanks become scarier. And the further you get back, the more likely they are to start standing on the truck as well. So ideally, we pretty much hold them back over here, but... No matter how you shake it still, they're still pushing through a really long alleyway. And then right at the end, like even all the way back here, you've still got cover that you can use the entire time. And this is where it starts getting really 2 CP effect because the spawn is pretty close, right? I'm back now. So things start getting pretty 2 CP towards the end. And this being this giant open space as well. Um, people like May start being good for defending as well, because you can just chuck your ult right here. There's no cover around it, forces them off the payload. Um, uh, just because there's, like, no cover in this big open space right here that they have to stand on. Or they have to split off and, like, start pushing into your team to use the cover around here, right? Um, so, th this is pretty much the only flank route you have to really watch out for. There are some other things you've got to watch out for, specifically if the enemy team's got a Reaper. There's a lot of blind corners around here he can teleport through, right? Because Reaper can just be over there, and then teleport across there. And if we're back here, we'd never know. So we've got to watch over here as well, if the enemy team have got a Reaper. But otherwise, we can see everybody go straight through, so it's not that much of a big deal. Um, and if you're back here as the long-range DPS, you can see that doorway, so it's not exactly a big risk to you, but it's something to bear in mind still. Um, if you're back here, you've got to watch this doorway, because people like Genji are going to peek through here. Like, you got your Ashes, your Soldiers, your Widows just sat back here, like, do it, play in the game, right? Looking down the scope, trying to shoot the bad men, and then Genji comes through that doorway and goes, Oh, sick. They're not looking, and they're not moving. So then he just comes around the corner and goes tink, 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 and he kills you. So you've got to be wary of this doorway if you're stood back here as a long-range DPS, because this is where the flankers are going to come through. Um, you don't really have to worry about many weird people coming through that doorway until the, you start losing ground, because someone like Roadhog can't really get up there to try for that. Um... Unless he's, like, prepared to commit to, like, the longest flank in history to get up there. So you've only really got to worry about heroes with vertical mobility getting up there. And of those, like, Genji's the only one that's really going to threaten you from that far away. But you've got to watch for that doorway as the flankers. And bear in mind that corner over there, especially if they've got a Reaper. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, it's not exactly a hard checkpoint to really, like understand you know it pretty much there's a long line of sight here there's one route you can go through it's a really good bunker map may checkpoint rather uh may is really good here lots of places to wall people off the entire way through alt's really good for this giant open space back here and the confined spaces over there wall off people who are going for flanks all kinds of stuff reaper's good same reason lots of confined spaces and angles for him to get into you at lots of blind corners to teleport around Pretty much though, you know, you play the long range DPS, you play the bunker, and you just try and not let them push too far into you. The This checkpoint, like, I would describe it as being a very honest checkpoint. You pretty much look at it, and you get the idea, right? You pick the long range DPS, you abuse the long line of sight, you play around the big health kit that you get back here, and you watch the pretty much 
only one flank group the attacking team has available here. The thing that's really going to get you on this checkpoint most of the time as the defending team is going to be big AoE ultimates because you're much more cramped in here, so they're much more likely to catch a lot of people. Because, like, if you're all stood, like, up here, you're really vulnerable to Graviton, you're really gra vulnerable to Earth Shatter, you're vulnerable to Death Blossom, Blizzard, all these kinds of ultimates, right? Uh, even, like, self-destruct, because, like, they can, like, chuck it over you, and then suddenly you've got to worry about that while worrying about them over there. So it's, like, big AoE ultimates are really the thing that are going to get you on this checkpoint. So try and still be, like, spread out as much as you can. Like, if your tanks are going to stand up here, have your DPS stood a little bit further back, your healers stood a little bit further back, right? And the benefit of people like Anna and Batista is they can stand up here with the long-range DPS as well. And it makes it much harder to get punished by these big AoE ultimates, which are the things that are really going to catch you on this checkpoint. But that's pretty much it. Not much to watch out for outside of that. And, you know, bunkers, try to abuse long lines of sight. Watch your one flank route. And that's pretty much it. Watch out for Reaper as well, because there's blind corners there. So, now let's go around and talk about the attacking team. So... Uh, attacking team, this is a good map to play uh, Arissa at them as well, who would have guessed. This is one of those maps where it's pretty easy to get a Bastion rolling on a payload because you can come out here and you're basically already on the payload, the attack, and you've got like this big range of space to go through before you're exposed to the attacking team, the defending team rather. Um, sometimes they're going to be harassing you from over here, but it's pretty easy to get the Bastion on the payload. And then, if they're stood up there, right, you come around this corner with your Bastion, ah, they're right there, and you start, like, laying into them. It can disrupt them pretty quickly, so this is one of those maps where it's pretty good to run a Bastion on. Um, it's pretty... Uh, the flankers are also good for this checkpoint, just because, as we established on the defending side, they're mostly going to be setting up over there. So if we can, and you can't see this, so if you can get, like, your Genji, your Tracer, Doomfist, whatever you have coming through here. Reaper also can, like, Shadow Step across there. Should have pointed that out on the defending side as well. But you can Shadow Step across here and uh, cut out most of the risk as well. And if, as soon as, like, somebody gets up here to try and contest the defending team, it gets a lot easier. But that's pretty much where they're going to be defending. Sometimes they'll be defending, like up here pretty much but like usually not the case and if it is if they are it's not that hard to usually disrupt them because if they're standing like right here then pretty much anybody can use this as like a soft flank at that point right because it's extremely safe to come through this corner because if they're defending over here then you're over there then You've just immediately oh, broke line of sight. And if somebody chases you through here, they're going to chase you past a large, large health kit. And you'll go around the corner, you break line of sight, you're back to your team really quickly. So even non-flankers can take advantage of this to do some um, sick stuff to try and disrupt them as well. You have your Roadhogs frequently come through here trying to hook somebody and get a pick. Um, McCree's, Hanzo's, pretty much anybody can come around here, try and get a pick, and then just get back through here real quick. Roadhog, beefy boy, large health kit, take a breather. He'll just waddle his way back to safety unless he gets collapsed on. McCree, Hanzo, you can just roll and lunge back out of line of sight as soon as they turn on you. And it's no big deal, right? So, if they're defending over here, just get people harassing them, dude. Just, like, get this one person, met. one or two people back here, disrupting them and start, like, picking at them, pulling them in two directions, right? And, but, and then at that point, you'll just pressure them until you can get the right fight in and hopefully it works out um you can try and do the high ground as well uh, but you got to be careful doing this because people love to camp this corner like mccree players may players reaper players they love to sit right here and wait to see if like a widow or a hanzo is gonna come around this corner and they go fucking sick free kill bro so you gotta be really careful turning this corner because there are very frequently scary people stood in there waiting to see if they can get you. But now you can like play this corner and you can contest the enemy team if they're stood over there as well. Um, if they start falling back, because sometimes they'll start falling back onto like the other side of the gas station being a little bit of a safer angle. At that point, you can start playing more aggressively and like come around here. 
but at this point you've got a long corridor to retreat through. So you've got to be more wary at that point because you've got a longer route to go to get to safety. But now you can see, get a wider angle. Once they're back there, you can start pressuring from over here as well. And you've got all this cover to use as well. Very nice. But you've got to watch like that corner at that point. Um, but those are like your options, really. You don't get a lot of options. But fortunately, this one option ends up being pretty good all the same just because most flankers like they can immediately cover this gap very quickly or not even being seen and then once you're in the gas station you've got this large health kit you can use you can now if you've got vertical mobility no big deal right you just get up there you get up to the staircase you start harassing them and it's one of those situations where like you as the flanker are gonna have like a lot of trouble like really killing anybody up there because usually it's gonna be like four plus people on this rooftop right but it's not really about the killing always it's about the pressuring and the pulling the enemy team in a different direction at the same time it's about making them scared right so if you're back here pressuring them they've got to be watching the two sides simultaneously right so it makes it easier for them to fuck up. It makes it easier to create opportunities for your team to capitalize on. Same deal if they're up there. If you're playing a flanker, you're not necessarily expecting to kill all the people up here, but you're just making them scared, right? Like you're coming up here, you're harassing them, then you're disengaging if you get scared, and then you're coming back and you're doing it again. And sooner or later, you or your team are going to get an opportunity and you're going to hopefully capitalize on it. Um, if they jump down off of the roof to start fighting you down here, this is where the uh, AoE ultimates get really good for defeating them as well, because you've got this big open, this, um, not really big open, so this is like confined corridor with not a lot of cover in it. So you can chuck grabs in here, catch a few people, you can chuck blizzards in here and catch people. And pretty much if they're like back here, their only option to get out of it is like go into the gas station, but at that point you just go fight them in the gas station and now they're like completely cornered. Um, so if they jump down, AoE ultimates get really good to contest them, but otherwise you're pretty much just like poking and prodding at them from multiple angles until they break. And once they get back over here as well, now you can start using this side as well to poke and prod at them. And same deal, you don't need to be a flanker to take advantage of this line of sight, right? Because if they're all the way over here, well, shit dude, I can't really see much over there very easily, and it's really far to get over there as well. So now, like, you, all your long-range DPS, your Roadhogs, they can come around here, get a different angle on the shield, try to get somebody. And, uh, same deal as well, up here, another angle to poke and prod at from. You can come around here and try some stuff if you're, like, a close-range hero. Um, Reaper can, like, come around this way, make him come around this way. You're right on top of them, just chuck your ult down there and start trying to get him. Um, you can start using the gas station yourself if you've got like vertical mobility now You can start poking and prodding at them from up here as well. Great um, And at that point they're starting to get really hemmed in and it's just about getting like the engage the like clean engage on them at that point But you've got a lot of angles that you can poke and prod at from and you don't need to be a flanker to take advantage of most of these angles as well, so it's uh one of those maps where you've got even though you've only got one option it's a really good option so it's not that much of a big deal as opposed to like hanamura where you've only got really one option and it's not a great option so second checkpoint though well now the world's our fucking oyster now we can do all kinds of shit so usually you're gonna see them defending back here and there'll be like a couple of people stood up there on the high ground as well so we got the, the same standard set of options, you know, we can just push up here through the payload with the payload and try to like fight them off as we push up um, Long range DPS. This is pretty much the angle you're gonna take to try and get people over here as well And hey, look at that pretty good line of sight on the defenders over there um, If they've got like sometimes Orisa will like sit up here with people as well Push it the like, shield over this way and if you come through this corner you can get like the different angle on the shield maybe poke and prod at them from over here as well all that and you've got this way over here as well and as we established on the defending side you don't need to be a flanker to take advantage of this way either you can take this route to get up onto the high ground um even if you're playing a mccree right like usually there's only like one or two people stood up here even if you're playing McCree, like, honestly, it's pretty low risk to, like, break off and go this way. 
creep around here, like crouch walk around this way, and then you'll find like somebody doing this half the time. And then without even having to come through the doorway, you go flashbang, fan, dead, regroup with team, right? So if there's only a couple people up here, even if you're not a flanker, like this is a pretty low risk route. Because uh, again, you're not really exposed to the enemy team. You can break line of sight to get back to your team really quickly again. So as long as like you're choosing the correct time to do it, this is pretty low risk. Like if you come around this corner and there's like three people stood over here, maybe think twice about doing it because then you might just they might just turn around and clap you but if it's only like one or two people up here dude McCree can do it Roadhog can do it um you can come through this doorway get a different angle on the shield over there as well if they're defending up in this angle you got a bunch of, d of uh, options available once you get like a little bit more up this way you can start trying to like maybe do stuff around here as well this is scary though because there's a ledge so bear that in mind but you know, you've got a bunch of different options for you, and again, you don't need to be a flanker to take advantage of them. This route, you know, flankers can go this way, no doubt, flankers can go the other way as well, but you actually don't need to be. The lines of sight are really nice, and it's really easy to break line of sight to the enemy team. So, they're relatively low risk flanks, even for non-flanking heroes as well. Um, still try to avoid fighting in the gas station, or not the gas station, the bar, if you can. Um, mostly just used to like cut through to get a better angle on people because you know you can see straight through there You can cut through here. Hey, you're behind them now stuff like that fighting in here is just a clusterfuck best avoided for all parties involved Once you start pushing them a little bit more back this way now again things are getting really easy at this point because now they're back here They can't see which route you're taking Suddenly attackers come come stand up here the more they get pushed back and then hey look This is a pretty juicy line of sight, right? If you're playing like ash as well. There's lots of like tight spaces to get your dynamite in there as well um, Pretty much like the you've got a lot of options to you We don't I don't think we need to go over this one too much for the attacking team because we already talked about it at length when defending You know, these are all the things you have to watch out for shocker. There's a lot of things you have to watch out for um, dive comps are really good for the second checkpoint as the attacking team as well, just because then you can take advantage of these myriad options much more easily. Um, it's much easier to contest their high ground defenders, which they'll probably still have at this point. And like, if you just like jump up here onto like whoever stood back here, be it their Anna, their Ash, whatever stood back here. Like if you pin them in this corner, they have to like muscle through you to get back and then they're jumping down onto your team as well, so... That tends to be scary for them. You can just like, if they're stood up here, you can just jump straight over this wall. They can't see you coming until you're on top of them and then they've got to jump down again. So like, dive comps are good here. It's just easier to take advantage of the options you have available to you the more mobility you have for this checkpoint. And it's easier to contest their high ground defenders, which they're likely to have for this checkpoint. So third checkpoint, really hard one to push through, dude. So if they're stood over here, and you're fighting them from this angle. Again, it's not that much of a big deal. You've just got to use the other options because you can go through here, use this as an option. You can go around here, use this as an option. And you're really just waiting to use a big AoE ultimate on them pretty much because if they're stood over here to fight you, they are necessarily all going to be very bunched together, right? Because there's not a lot of space to stand over here if you're defending from this position. So big AoE ultimates are going to be very punishing to them over there. And you can take advantage of these doorways, like, pretty much risk-free, and your close-range heroes are just, like, bam, right on top of them. And if you got vertical mobility, you can come around this way, come around the back side, and then, hey, look, I've got all the doorways I can go through again. I can jump down on them and start ulting from over here. I can walk up behind them. Maybe their Anna and Zen are stood back here, so I come around this corner and just clap them and then move up to start fighting over here again. So... This is not the big deal if they start defending here. Just don't keep trying to like frog march up the middle or like up the side. Use the other paths and just like poke and prod at them, pick at them, try to build by time until you get your ultimates and then just punish them for all being stood together in the same spot. Just don't like keep doing the same thing over and over again where you're just like, all right, gonna march right up at them. Oh fuck, they just like 
kept shooting me as I was walking up this really open, like, this really confined, non-covered location right into them. Fuck, that's weird. They, like, broke my shield way before I even got to them, and they just punished me for it. Don't keep doing that. Do some other stuff. Get people going the side routes. Wait till you, just, like, wait. Poke at them until you get your ultimate. No big deal. So now, but if they're defending over here, as they should be, usually in line, like, between these two things right here is where they'll stand. Now things are getting a little harder for us to do. Um, it's easier now for our long-range DPS to contest them because they can stand back here. And you can see the long-range DPS back here. So, And you'll see like over their shields as well because of the angle. So you can contest them back there. You've got this cover to use. It's very nice. Um, so you can get your Widows, your Ashes, your Hondos back here. And... It's relatively risk-free, the only thing that's gonna happen maybe is they get dove on by the defending team if they have divers, or they get just outplayed by the other long-range DPS, but this is a pretty safe angle for those people to try and start leveraging. If you're Reaper, you know, you can teleport over here, and then you can just sort of march your way over, and it's a little scary coming through here, but if they're defending like right here, you race, uh, shadow step over here, well, now I'm behind them. Now I just come around this corner, and I start, like, fighting whoever is right here. Maybe I just come around this corner and spin on them, depending on what I'm looking at, right? Like, you can get to them. If you're really patient, you can shadow step over to this doorway. Come around the side over here. Oh, didn't expose myself, right? As long as nobody stood right here, you can wait and shadow step again over here. And then, like, they might see you over there, so it's a little scary. But if you're really patient, you might be able to shadow step twice and get on the high ground DPS without them actually noticing that you're coming. Um, a few things have to go right for you for that one. Because, you know, you got to get over here, be able to come around. There's got to be no one here that can see you. Teleport, and then you can teleport over there. They might see you doing it over here, but by this point, you've already covered the distance. Even if you get seen there, you're on them, right? You've only got to come up here, and you're fighting them at that point. So, sometimes that'll work. Mostly predicated on if anybody will see you through here or through here as you're, like, getting ready to shadow step. But sometimes that works. That's nice. Um, and, of course, you've still got this option all the way back here. If you've got vertical mobility, you can come around here. Hey, I'm behind them again. Hey. I'm behind them again. If I'm playing like Widow or Ash, you know, I can come up this way and then get a different angle on those people as well. Um, it's a little scarier to do it on um, heroes like Widow and Ash just because it's harder to escape if you're in this location. And you're really just banking on killing their high ground defender back here, right? Like, that's what you're really hoping for. Because after that, like... You can't really do too much else with this angle at that point, right? Because, mate, you kill the guy back there. All right, so now I'm going to come over here. And I'm over here as an attacker between the defending team and their spawn, right? It ends up not being particularly good, but sometimes you can pick that person off over there. Sometimes that's enough, but you can't really do anything with this angle other after that. You're pretty much just going to be like, and hope they don't get you as you do that, right? but you can still do that. Um, but at this checkpoint, like, you're really... At, this is really the point you start banking on AoE ultimates, just, like, catching them, because, you know, having diving heroes is going to help so that you can cover the distance to get to the people that are stood back there as well. That's going to be helpful. Having flankers is going to help. Having people with vertical mobility is going to help because then you can take advantage of these options that you have available to you. Because if you're just playing, like, a bunker comp at this point... Your whole option, this is it. You just go through this corridor and outfight them. And that's your option. Hopefully, like, get them with your ultimates. That's it. If you've got people that are flankers, divers, have got vertical mobility, you can take advantage of the other options you have available to you. But if you're trying to rock, like, a standard, like, bunker, like... Hanzo, McCree, Anna, Batista kind of composition. Your options are outfight them in this corridor, and that's it. You've got no other options. If you push them back a little bit, maybe you can start taking advantage of this high ground as well, but it's not like the greatest as the attacking team. It's pretty exposed still, and like pretty close to the defenders if they've got anybody that can gap close on you, but so just try to run like the standard, like 
death ball bunker comps right here really limits what you have available to try like it really is just fight them in this hallway better so having like at least a flanker or a diver is helpful because then you've got somebody that can pressure them from a different angle and then you're taking advantage of more of the map more of the options it's very easy and very um, counter it's very easy to react to and counter you if you can only really do one thing and if the enemy if the defending team sees that you're running just like a bunker comp or a death ball comp they're like sick I don't even need to worry about watching the side routes because they can't do them they're just not feasible for them to take advantage of those routes right um, you can hop up this way to try and start doing stuff over here again but again if you're playing a long-range DPS like this angle is not very good, aside from trying to get a pick on the person over there, because you're, like, right next to the enemy team. So, even if you make the hop up here, first off, they're gonna see you doing this. Like, there's almost impossible for them to miss you, unless they are really hemmed in the back right now. But at that point, you're probably not even gonna be using this route or considering it, because there's just other ways you can go at that point. So, like, that's your option at that point. But... So, yeah, but if you've got people with vertical mobility, you've got flankers, you've got divers, it's much harder for them to react to you now because you've got more things you can do. So try and vary up your team comp a little bit for this checkpoint. Don't just go hard on the bunker or the death ball anymore. Mix it up, get some people in there that can take advantage of these other options. Get some people that can gap close on those people up there, on the, sitting up on the truck, right? Um, get, like, get, a, get like a Reaper or a May. Reaper can take advantage of these side routes, and he's got an ultimate that can benefit in this, like, confined space. May as well. She's got- she can wall off the defending team just as well as the attacking team- or the defending team can wall off the attackers, right? So, May can be nice here as well. The ultimate is still as good in that open space over there for the attacking team as it is for the defending team. That much is true as well. And people, like, if you're gonna just kind of brawl it out with them in this alleyway, it will behoove you to have people that are really good at brawling. Like, it will be nice for you to have people like um, Reinhardt over Orissa, who can, like, be getting, like, big hits in in this confined location. He's got Earth Shatter, which is much easier to catch people in these long, straightaway halls, right? Um, get, like, a May in there, a Reaper in there, Bridget. They can, like, get into these locations and just, like fight it out, just brawl it out in this space with the defending team. It's harder for you to contest the people up on the high ground, but if you dominate the low ground, then it doesn't necessarily matter, because if you've got, like, a real brawling fighting team, you've got, like, the Bridget May Reaper Ryan just, like, marching in and, like, hard engaging in this area down here, you're all beefy people, you're all tanky, it's gonna be hard for the high ground defenders to kill you, and you might just be able to dominate the space down here before they become an issue, and then once this is dealt with, like, now it's no big deal, now someone can just go up there and dislodge them. Um, but I recommend having a more varied team comp for this point. If you're going, like, you've been going bunker, you've been going just like a death ball standard 2-2-2 arrangement, get somebody in there with vertical mobility because that opens up a lot more for you on this checkpoint. Uh, Reaper opens up a lot more for you on this checkpoint because he can do that and he can do that as well. So he's good for this checkpoint because he gets to use all of the options simultaneously. He can come brawl it out. He can flank from over there. He can flank from over there. He can do it all on this checkpoint. Um, the risk, of course, being that if they react to Reaper properly, it's hard for him to get stuff done, but, you know, you gotta figure out if that's the case in the game at the time. And then once you get over here, it's, you know, it's like playing a 2CP map at this point, you're just trying to get that clean team wipe over here, so you can actually capture the last little bit. And this is, again, where the big AoE ultimates will really pay off, because that's what really facilitates getting these big team wipe fights going in when you catch like three people in a graviton you catch three people in the blizzard you force them all to spread out from the blizzard from the self-destruct and all that that's how you get like the really clean fights at the end here by having these big punishing ultimates um once you get over here that's really it it's about getting the clean fight uh do watch up there sometimes they'll like defenders like to stand up here like a widow or something 
might come and sit up here. It's like really obnoxious to stand up here because of these platforms, but sometimes a Widow player might come and like tuck in over here, so like watch out for that, but not very common. Does happen sometimes though, so worth pointing out all the same, but... You know, those are your options, you gotta try and make as much of them as you can. That's pretty much the attacking team for most maps, but... This is the checkpoint where it gets really hard to capture it at this point, because... Limited options, they aren't great options. And you've got a 2CP-like checkpoint right at the end that you have to capture as well, so... It's difficult, but that's pretty much what I got for you. So thank you very much for watching if you did. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, I'm more than happy to answer. If you haven't already, you can join our Discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them or just shitpost with us. I've started streaming on Twitch Thursday, Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 8 p.m. EST till midnight EST. There's a link to the channel in the description. And if you managed to make it all the way through the video and somehow still enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe for more content of middling quality in the future. And I hope you found the video helpful.